So today I wanna to talk about debugging magic and why printf might break your program. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Sorry, I have missed a couple of weeks. Life just got really crazy and I just wasn't able to get them out. Hopefully things are gonna calm down a little bit and we'll have a lot of great videos coming up soon. But today I wanna to talk about a scenario that comes up at least once or twice a semester where someone comes to me and they say, hey, I've got this program and it's magically breaking whenever I add a printf statement or maybe it breaks when I remove a printf statement. Whatever the case may be, it seems magical and they're like, I'm sure printf isn't broken, but what's going on? So today I wanted to talk about that, see if I could give you a little bit of debugging help, just some insight into what might be going on. And hopefully that's something that'll help you in a future debugging experience. Before we jump into it, I just wanna thank Thank everyone for all your help, all your support of this channel. I really appreciate it. I couldn't do it without you. Also, I just want to recognize we just hit 100,000 subscribers, which was awesome. Honestly, this is a milestone that I didn't really imagine we would ever even hit, and it's really humbling. So thank you so much for your help in making this channel possible. And now, without further ado, let's jump into the code. Okay, so this is not the student code that I talked about, but this is an example that I created that mimics this behavior. So I have a really simple program, maybe the kind of thing that you might see in an intro class. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to read in some input from standard in. So I'm just using f gets right here to read in input a line at a time. And then what it's going to do is it's going to come through here and it's going to try to split them into key value pairs. Now this isn't all that critical. The whole point of this exercise is not this test program. The exercise is really looking at what happens when you have magical failures. So really quick, just if I want to point it out. Let's just compile. And so if we run example, it's just gonna wait for input. But so let's say that we have an input file. So I have an input file here. This is basically just the, the test inputs that I'm gonna use. So this passes uh, a bunch of key value pairs. So in this case, you know, first name, last name, and age. We're gonna pass that into our program. So I might say something like uh, cat inputs.txt and pipe that into my example program. And so in this case, you can see, well, okay, it, it looks like it kind of works. In this case, I'll just say, yeah, th this, is, this is fine. This is what I expected is each time it gets a key value pair, it's gonna print out the current status of the person. And so it just updates it with each one it gets. So the first one, it just adds the first name. And then the second one adds my last name. And then the third one adds the age 123. So that looks like it's working. Now, the thing that is the thing I want to focus on is if you come here, there's this printf. And often this is a situation if you have an auto grader or something that's that's machine grading this code, maybe you didn't, you weren't supposed to have this. So I come in here and I remove it and I come down here and I compile and then I decide to run that exact same input and now it's seg faults. So this is where students start to go, hey, wait, what happened there? Because that printf, that, was, that wasn't that was changing anything, right? It's not even printing out any variables, so it can't be a bad pointer or something. So I just thought we'd just talk a little bit about what's going on here because this happens pretty frequently. And yeah, so when you have a printf call that makes or breaks your program here, there's a few things that you can look at first before you panic and think that your code is possessed by demons. So if you're segfaulting in a printf, the first place you would look is, are we printing out any variables? Now I know I just said we're not, we're not in this case, so that's not the case, but you might be printing out a variable, you might be dereferencing a pointer in this call that is, maybe it's a bad pointer. So that could result in a segfault. But in this case, we know that's not the case because the seg fault happens when I remove the printf, right? So it's it's the absence of the printf that's causing things to break, okay? Now, the reason for this is simple and it's also something that's not portable. You may not see this on your machine. I'm seeing this on my Linux machine. In just a minute, I'll show you on my Mac how it works a little differently. But the point is, with this example, we are in undefined behavior territory. So we may see different results on different machines. The problem, the actual bug in this program is right here. Here. The problem is, is that I did not allocate enough space for the values that I wanted, right? So I actually allocated here the size of values, which is a pointer to a struct. And so what that did is it allocated the size of a pointer, okay? So it allocated eight bytes for this thing, not the, uh, you know, what a looks like a little over 1k that I actually needed for this struct. Okay, so what I should have done here is said, you know, size of struct my values or something like this, you know, something that actually allocates enough space for the struct. If I do this, then you're going to see that things work just fine without the printf. 
no problem. So the question is, is why did the printf actually cause this issue? So if I come back, let's put our bug back in here. In this situation, the thing that changes when you add the printf is that printf allocates memory. Okay, I mentioned this briefly in a previous video, I think, but there's a buffer inside printf that it allocates. It usually allocates on the first printf call. And generally, depending on your buffering mode, that's either 1K or 8K. In this case, it's 1K. And what that does is, if, if you think about it this way, when we request memory for the heap, we, we always think of the heap growing as we allocate more memory. We request that memory in pages of memory. Those are like four kilobyte chunks from the OS usually. And so we have these pages and our heap is growing, but it grows in chunks of 4K. Now the trick here is that if I do not give a block enough space, I don't allocate enough space, I have an eight byte block and I'm overwriting that, I'm basically clobbering memory after that, the outcome is not always predictable. Sometimes it might seg fault if we actually walk off the end of a page, but if we don't walk off the end of the page, we might just be corrupting memory that we have no business touching. And that's what was happening in this case. But when I add the printf, printf happens to allocate an extra 1K so that shifts things around and either changes what I'm corrupting with my memory corruption bug, or it shifts my memory allocation just a little further into memory so that now I do end up walking off the end of the page. In either case, really what it's doing is it's just adjusting the layout of the heap just enough that it is causing me to seg fault, to actually walk off into an unmapped page where without the printf, I was not walking off that page. Okay, so now I told you we would do this. Let's jump over into, now I'm in my Mac, so I just jumped out of the VM. Let's recompile this. Okay, so now we have this program again, and we'll just do the same thing we did before. So let's cat our inputs into example. And you can see, okay, this, this works fine without the printf and uh, because I forgot to save this. So now if we come in here and we compile it, so we still have the bug in here and we compile it with the printf. In this case, it's not site faulting. So again, like I said, my Mac and Linux happen to be using different allocators. Their you know, things are lining up differently against these pages. And so in this case, even with the printf or without the printf, it's not seg faulting. You know, the bug is still there. So for example, if I made this struct slightly bigger, then in this case, we might have a seg fault. So anyway, really simple example, but I hope that helps you in the future when you see some kind of magic situation where you're adding or moving or removing something that seems like it shouldn't have any impact on your program and all of a sudden you're getting a seg fault. Always think about memory corruption because that's a really common culprit is you might have a space, you might have a block that you didn't give enough space to, some memory that you shouldn't be writing to or shouldn't be writing as much as you are writing into it. And it's just changing the heap layout just enough to cause you to break. So the problem likely isn't the printf call itself, it's just having an impact on the rest of the program and that's bringing another bug to the surface, which is great because now you can reproduce your bug and so hopefully you can get it fixed. So I hope this helps you, I hope you learned something new and until next week, I'll see you later.